Okay, so the many-to-many -many relationship. We're running a little bit behind here. I apologize for that, but that's the way it goes sometimes. We know there's lots and lots of one-to-many relationships, and they often chain all the way down through from generation to generation, right? You know, grandparents and parents and children and so on in this one-to-many chain of relationships. Like we saw earlier, the nation, state, city example, customers and orders and things like that, right? Uh, and whenever we had these one-to-many relationships, basically the primary key on the one side or parent side would map over as a foreign key, even if it was a composite made up of two or three fields together, all three of them then would map over as foreign keys into the child table and away you go, right? No big deal. So what is the change then as we go to many-to-many? Well, basically, many to many, as I briefly mentioned the other day, is that you can't just do a direct line between the two. You have to have an association table, as it's sometimes called, or an intersection table is the term I usually use, right? That supports information about the relationship between the two, right? <coughs> okay, so just to examine a, a little different scenario, Right. Over time, employees can work in more than one department. Wait a second. We had always that an employee was in one department. The department had many employees, but it was one to many and then many back to one. So if an employee can work in many departments, right, during a current appointment then or a job, he or she could work in more than one department at the same time. How would we model that? As I said, we want to do that and we're not allowed to. The reason we're not allowed to is not because we're mean, because if you try to follow the same approach, that, that little crow's foot at the end of the line means you carry the primary key over as a foreign key, try it, and it will not work, right? You run into problems because it just creates a, a references back and forth which are unsustainable. You end up getting replication of data over and over again, and you lose the ability to have any kind of data integrity as well. So, you know, what you end up looking at is something like where the department code carried over here with the employee number carried up here. Okay, you might think, well, hey, yeah, I could probably make that work and so on. But the problem then is you start putting some data in there and you see what you get is a mess, right? So, you know, looking at the department table, well, if you have uh, employees number one, four, and five all working the department, then you'd end up having all the data for the other columns replicated over and over again, repeated values, just to support the fact that you've got three different employees in the one department here. Obviously that's not going to work very well, right? Uh, and certainly it would increase the storage requirements and so on, but basically the biggest problem is one of our rules of thumb for database design is a single piece of information should be stored only once if at all possible. Right? As soon as you start seeing repeated values in tables, now mind you, it's different when you do a select query with join. Sometimes we do see that repetition, right? And that's okay for analyzing the data, but for storing the data, repetition is a bad, bad thing. Okay? So, you know, just to have four different employees in an information system, well, we wouldn't want to see all the data repeated four times over, right? Plus, you know, say this changes, right? The uh, budget level for information system, instead of having to go into one place to change the budget figure there, you have to look and find everywhere, right? And what if you accidentally miss some? Then your data integrity goes <coughs> right down the tubes. So it just doesn't work that way. So, of course, you know, in any scenario, there's often more than one right way of putting it together, but all workable all workable many-to-many -many relationships in a relational database will always have an intersection table. So something like this probably works very well, a position, right? You know, this is one way you could model it. So the position, in this case, has a primary key of position ID. Right? We know that it will have the employee number passed over because of this little crow's foot here. It's like it's carried over the foreign key. We know it'll have the department code, right? So in total, we have six, six fields in that intersection table. Because the two foreign keys coming over into the center. So we know that it was this department, this employee, 
and what the job was and what the start date and the salary. Right. And that is a very workable solution you could come up with for that scenario. Okay. And you see that often, not always, but often these intersection tables seem to work out to be very good logical places to store other information that really describes, more than anything else, information about this particular relationship between the two outer entities, right? The relationship between the employee and the department. What job position was it, right? When did they start that in that position and so on? Okay, so just looking at some other sample data then, what do we see here? <coughs> well, if we have that department and employee table, then our position table, notice that we don't see any foreign keys in either of these anymore. Right? The employee table doesn't have a foreign key. Now, we look in the intersection table, the position table, it has the employee number foreign key and the department code foreign key, as well as the job title that they have and their position start date and so on. So if you try working with that model, you'll find that actually it functions quite well for you, right? You can start querying on that because we know how we can do joins. And by the way, that's the biggest area where people lost marks in the test was getting their joins working correctly. And a lot of people had trouble getting that primary foreign key set up properly across the join. Okay. But of course, there's lots of choices. How you define the primary key for this intersection table there can be more than one right answer. Sometimes things just work out better in the long run. Okay, so sometimes you'll try one approach first and then see, no, maybe I need a different approach after all. So what do we see here representative of these plus symbols? We've talked about this before. They represent that in this case, we're gonna assume that the primary key that's coming over here as the foreign key will be part of the primary key of the intersection table. And the plus sign on both sides means that the primary key of position will be made up of the employee number foreign key, department code foreign key, and oh look, we also have a start date. Three, three fields together defining the unique, in combination, unique identifier for each position. This employee in this department starting on this date. You can see why you might want the date in there. If you just had the combination of department and employee number as the primary key in the intersection table, what if they go off somewhere else and they come back to work in that department again? You wouldn't be allowed to enter a record in the position table with the same employee in the same department a second time around, right? Because that primary key must be unique. No other way about it, right? So that would mean you could only ever have one record for a given employee in a given department. Adding that third field of the date means as long as they had a different start date, then yeah. So maybe they worked for a while here, they went off somewhere else, now they're back in this department. Maybe they have a different start date, obviously, so we would be allowed to store in the system information about them coming back on this date, same employee in the same department. Okay. Another example, solution of an employee works in many departments at the same time. The only real difference here is how the primary keys work. All we're doing is we're saying position ID. There's no other restrictions on duplication here or for uniqueness. So the employee could work in multiple departments, okay? He could work in the same department multiple times with this arrangement. And so there's less restriction, which sometimes is what you want, right? All there really is is a job title in there. So, you know, if you ever needed to store that over time, you had two different job titles, this isn't gonna do. But you know, it's not wrong. It's just maybe not gonna cover everything yeah. you ever need to work out. Okay, students and courses. Obviously a student takes many courses. Of course, look around the room, there's many students in it, right? We'll often have some sort of intersection table to support that many to many relationship. Something like enrollment can work fairly well. Enrollment notes that the uh, student is in a particular course, okay? So that could be the combination of the two for the primary key. 
So the trouble with that approach then would be what? If that's the primary key, that this student is in this course, what if they fail? They won't take the course over again. The database wouldn't let you add them a second time into the same course. Because if the primary key is just the two pieces of information combined together, then it wouldn't be allowed, right? So again, well, probably the term would look after that. We could add that to the primary key. And the combination of the term, the student, and the course, that would be okay. You could retake the course then, even if you failed the one time. Obviously, the grade might go in there as well. Right? You're hearing me being very unsure about things. That's not what I'm trying to come across as. But I'm trying to come across with the point that modeling is more an art than the science. So you have to think it through. Think, okay, I think this might work. And then try to think of exceptions and reasons why you might want to change the design. Designing any database model is a very iterative process. And you come up with one design and you just throw test cases at it and think, okay, will that handle if things change this way or that way, right? And if not, then maybe we should make a change, run through your test cases again, and come up with better and better ideas. Eventually, come up with something you're feeling fairly confident ha ha will handle most situations that are going to come up. That's all there is to database design, really. Thinking about that and what the meaningful implications are of the different ways you can arrange primary keys, foreign keys, and so on. Okay, so here we just have a maybe an integer identity, that auto number field that generates itself here for the primary key. Now we have no restriction, okay, to prevent the same student from taking the course over again. They take it as many times as they want, just like we would have if we had added the term, perhaps, you know, to the other two. It's kind of nice though we only have one primary key. <laughs> Makes it easier to manage things than writing in joins based on all three all the time. <laughs> okay. So let's get some sample data then for our student enrollment scenario, right? So if we have students over there, student numbers, these names, we have courses here like Prog 1735, what a great course, yeah. one of the best courses you'll ever take. Okay. And then down here in enrollment, right, you can see the term fall 2008 or whatever, okay, section numbers, student numbers, course numbers, and the grade, and away you go. Hopefully you're not at 45, okay, hopefully you're much more up here around 88 or 99 maybe. Yeah. Questions about that? All right. Well, that's just a quick discussion. Please watch the reference videos. She goes through and you know, talks about all the different options in terms of how you can create the different uh, arrangements of many to many uh, configurations and so on. What we have under assignments is your next lab. Let me quickly talk about the instructions here. <coughs> Okay, so we have a script that creates all this. Whew, you're probably saying to yourself, oh my God, I wouldn't want to, have to write all the create table statements myself. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six tables. Okay, so look how they're arranged. That's the important thing. Okay. So this is kind of for tracking game results, basically. Okay. So if a game development system and so on, so he's a developer, develops many games, right? A gamer plays many games. No, I never would have thought that was true, right? As the gamer plays the game, okay? You only get one. Notice that we have multiple relationships being described between the many, many relationship of gamer to game, right? Weapons earned is one. So this allows us to track, okay? Um, what weapons have been earned by the gamer playing the game? Kind of thing that you typically do need to look after in the database to support gaming. Game statistics, right? Skill ratio, levels, experience points, okay, and so on. So in this example then, we have a couple situations here. Our primary key is just the combination of the two foreign keys put together, whereas this one has its own independent primary key. Okay. We do sometimes 
have a need for more than one intersection table to support a many-to-many. -many. Either one of them will support it being simply many-to-many, -many, but often we'll break that up so we have more than one intersection table. If there's specific information we do need to track, okay, for example, uh, the weapon information about weapons earned really wouldn't fit into the other game statistics. It's a different kind of information that we need to track, so we use a separate intersection table for that. That's the scenario you're given to work on in this lab. So we also have a script up here, so thankfully you can say to yourself you don't have to create all those tables and populate the data yourself, but, but, I feel like the guy with the Ginsu knives. If you order right now, no. <laughs> Okay, that's not it, but, but you have to decide the order to create them because they're all in separate files, right? And you know from experience now, if you try to create a child that doesn't have the parent in a one-to-many relationship, then you won't be able to execute that script. You'll get errors. So you have to use the model as a guide and figure out the order in which you can execute the scripts to create and populate each table, okay? I'll say no more about that. I'll leave that to you. All right, so download the scripts, okay? Execute them in the correct order so that referential integrity works. And then basically you want to just do a whole bunch of queries. So this is like the same kind of select queries that you were doing uh, in the test just recently. Again, my rules of thumb to answer any one of these questions. Look at the tables. Where's the information stored that you actually need to access to answer the question? Right? Only select the minimum number of tables that you need okay, to answer the question itself. So if the question involves information about the gamer's name, right, and information about their game statistics, then you only need this table and that one. Don't include anything else. And also, let me mention, there's two separate ways that gamer and game relate to each other, you should never use both in the same query. You will never get the right answer to any question using both of these ways that they relate to each other. So either you can do your inner join, say from here, through to here, through to here, or from here, through to here, through to here. But you would never use both at the same time. That's just a tip. There you go. Leave a penny on the table on your way out for that extra bit of information I gave you, and we'll be happy, okay? So other than that, uh, I'll basically I was going to let you just work on the, uh, on the lab in the time we have left today. Um, there's a number of other scenarios you can use to practice modeling and understanding many to many relationships up in Blackboard, but I think what you need to do, because we're running a bit behind, is focus on getting a start on the lab while I'm here and I can help you if you're stuck and you're not understanding things. Uh, question earlier was about taking up the test. I realize I don't even have the test with me. <laughs> uh, so maybe on uh, Wednesday when we have more time I can quickly review the test then as well. Okay, so I'll give you the rest of the day now to get started on this lab and I can come around and help you if you're stuck.